Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is using parameters in Azure Logic Apps standard. Let's go. So much like when you write and deploy code, you want to make sure that your code is portable so that it limits risks as you deploy from one environment to another. So you typically have your code, you typically have configuration, you modify your configuration, code uses that configuration and you're good. Now, we can do something similar in Azure Logic Apps through a feature called parameters. And so we can go ahead and make these config changes from either the Azure portal or through VS Code or ALM process. But as I've discovered through creating this video, it's best to standardize your process so that you don't inadvertently blow values away. Now, if you're familiar with Power Automate, or the Power Platform in general, this feature is kind of similar to environment variables. It does remind me a fair bit of it. Now, since we're talking about Azure Logic App Standard, these parameters are available to all workflows that belong to that Logic App Standard instance. And this is part of the reason why it, it you know, feels a little familiar with environment variables. In the context of Power Platform, you have an environment, the variables are available to everyone who has access in the environment. Similar, the difference being the Logic App standard instance is our boundary as opposed to Dataverse environment being our boundary itself. Now, if we think about the general process, how do we go ahead and do this? Go ahead, build your Logic App, get it working, getting tested end to end, then create your parameter, then go ahead and replace the hard-coded values with parameters from dynamic content. So let's start off in the Azure portal itself. Once again, I'm using the standard SKU of Logic Apps here. So I have my uh, workflow that's you know created, and then I can go ahead and create a parameter by clicking on the parameters link, create parameter, and then providing some sort of uh, value. In this case, I provide a name, the type, and the value itself. When I go ahead and I save, that logic app that will get injected into our parameters and then it'll show up as dynamic content itself. So let's go ahead, let's just check out a demo uh, in the Azure portal and uh, see this in more detail. Okay, so here's that workflow I was talking about. I've got a hard-coded value here I've tested. Life is good from that perspective. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on parameters, create parameter, in this case, we're going to call it email address. And I'm just going to call this portal just so that we can see this later on uh, when we get into the VS Code side of things. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say it is a string. And then I'm going to provide an email address. Okay, so that looks good. We can just click out, hit the X, hit save. And at that point, we should have a parameter. Uh, established. So if we click on parameters again, we'll go ahead, we can see it, we can edit it if we want. Now we naturally want to go ahead and use this um, inside of our script here. So let's go ahead and click into our two and then go ahead and click our parameter and then we can go ahead and save it. So now we've essentially externalized this value. Uh, we don't need to go ahead and edit our logic app in order to manipulate the value that is being used here. Let's go ahead, let's run this now and see what happens from that perspective. So if my scenario is, is whenever we have a new record that's created in this list, that we will then subscribe to that event and go ahead and send an email notification off to the value that's configured inside of our parameter itself. So I just need to fill out a few details here and then we'll go ahead and we'll click save and then we should see a new email show up here shortly. Okay, here's our run history. So let's just go ahead and take a closer look at what was sent. Here we've got our action. Uh, this is where we had previously configured our parameter and we can see that our value has been injected at runtime. And if we flip over to our email, we're going to see that uh, our email has been successfully received. Now, one other thing to mention is that we can go ahead and see our parameters in one other view itself. So here I've got a, a Logic App standard instance. And if I, in left nav, head over to parameters, we're going to see the raw 
sort of values of what we had created, right? So an email address portal and our values. I could go ahead and add uh, new parameters here as well, um, if I wish, as long as I conform to the schema here that's being imposed. And uh, so that's good. And so I can go ahead and modify this even outside of the uh, designer if I want. Now, by this being centralized within the standard instance SKU that I have here, is any other workflow that's part of this standard logic app can go ahead and use these values as well. It's not a one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, so it truly becomes something that could be used for like a whole group or set of, of workflows that you want to be able to take advantage of this. So that concludes the portal side of the demo. Let's now talk about VS Code. So there's some similarities here and some differences as well. Now in terms of similarities, we'll go ahead and define parameters in very much the same manner that we do in the portal, right? We'll be able to click on parameters, click on create parameter, and then we'll go ahead and see sort of that experience where we can define our parameter itself. Now what's interesting is that this is all happening locally when you go ahead and define this. What's happening is that there's a parameters.json file that gets added to your project when you go ahead and create this parameter. And so this is where things get interesting in terms of like local debugging. You can go ahead and use these locally because uh, it's part of your project itself. But when you publish this logic app over to the cloud, this file essentially gets pushed with it. Now, anything that you previously had um, in that portal uh, parameters uh, experience that I showed you will get overwritten. And I'll have a slide that talks a little bit more about this later, but important to know, and I think that's why you should really figure out, standardize what your process is on maintaining these parameters going forward. So let's go ahead, let's uh, jump into a demo with VS Code. Okay, so I'm in VS Code now. I've got a copy, so this is a different logic app. Uh, this is called parameters-vs code, but same logic. We're gonna go ahead and use the same scenario here. Got my hard-coded value here, and now I wanna go ahead and change it, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a parameter. Now, this one time I'm gonna go email address VS Code, and we're gonna choose a string and Okay, we'll go ahead and we will save that. So notice when I did hit save, I had a new file that was created. And so here we have our parameter here. Okay, but before we can deploy to Azure, what we do need to do is go ahead and replace our hard-coded value with our parameter. So let's go ahead, let's select our parameter, hit save, and then we're gonna go ahead and deploy to Azure. Okay, so our deployment's complete. Uh, we're now back in the Azure portal. Let's just go ahead and take a look at our configuration. And when we do, we can see that we've got the parameter that we had just created prior. So this is now in the service. We can go ahead and run this. Once again, I'll go to SharePoint and create a new record. So I'm in SharePoint. Create a new project, we'll use different values this time, different date, and save. And so this should now run, and we should see the value being injected at runtime once again. Okay, I see we've got a new run here. Let's go ahead and take a look at run history. And sure enough, it was able to go ahead and grab the value from our parameters. And then if we go ahead and check our email, uh, sure enough, we can see that our email has been sent and we've got the correct values here as well. Now, I alluded to this earlier, but uh, this, is, uh, this is why it's pretty important and I'll show you what it looks like inside of Azure itself. When you publish parameters from VS Code or your ALM pipelines, you will overwrite the values that exist in the service. Uh, like this, I showed you the experience for a standard logic app. And uh, this like isn't an upsert that there's no logic that's being applied here. It looks to me like it's a delete and an insert. So let's flip over back to the portal. And that's why I deliberately uh, you know, named the parameters differently 
um, email address portal and then email address VS Code so that we would be able to go ahead and see this experience in the portal itself. So back in the Azure portal and I'm in my standard logic app, let's go ahead and click parameters. And when we go ahead and click it, notice that we only have the VS Code value. Uh, we don't have the portal value itself. And so this is why it's, it's good to have a strategy on where you're going to maintain these parameters. And naturally, you know, it's something that you're probably going to want to have in source control itself. So if you have like ALM or automated deployments, that would be a good opportunity to store your config values there, then publish from a centralized and repeatable manner, and then be able to consume them in your logic apps itself so that you don't end up clobbering. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want someone that does something quickly in the portal and then your regular process comes along and does a publish and deletes that quick fix that's so tempting to do in production, um, that's where you want to be able to, to maintain this in a very methodical manner itself. So that concludes another episode on the channel. Thanks for checking it out. Likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Thanks again, and we'll catch you soon. Take care.